On the eve of the 128th Championships, the All England Club awaits the arrival of the world's finest tennis players. Everything is set and ready. Over the next two weeks, the courts at Southwest 19 will witness incredible action, drama, tension, excitement, and joy. So who'll be crowned the Wimbledon champions in 2014? Let's look back on the tennis year and look ahead to the championships. Start of Wimbledon 2013, the seven-time champion Roger Federer was in familiar surroundings, opening proceedings on centre court. But the third seed found himself in the same quarter as his old rival Rafael Nadal. The Spaniard was seeded an uncharacteristic fifth because he'd been sidelined with injury for seven months. But Rafa had just captured his eighth French Open crown. The top seed and 2011 champion Novak Djokovic had started the year winning a third successive Australian Open title. The Serb arrived in London having lost to Nadal in the semi-finals of the French Open, but he was ready to take on arguably the greatest challenge of them all. Time. Andy Murray came into the championship seeded too. In the majors, he was runner-up to Djokovic in Melbourne and had been forced to pull out of Paris with a back injury. His comeback at Queen's resulted in a third grass court title prior to playing at Southwest 19. But could he end Britain's 77 year wait for a men's Wimbledon champion after Fred Perry? The weight of a nation was once again on his shoulders. The bottom half of the draw lost two major contenders in the opening three days. The first casualty departed on day one. Rafa Nadal was beaten in straight sets by the Belgian journeyman Steve Darcis, ranked 135th in the world. Never before had Rafa been defeated in the first round of a major. The Ukraine's Sergei Stokowski caused the next big upset in round two. Sikowski, ranked 116th, stunned Roger Federer in four sets with a sensational display of the art of serve and volley tennis. Murray's route to the final now looked a little easier, but he was taken the distance by Spain's Fernando Vadasco in the quarterfinals. The Scot fought back from two sets down. He went on to defeat Poland's Jerzy Janowicz in the semis to reach his second Wimbledon final. In the top half of the draw, Djokovic progressed safely through to the business end of the championships, reaching the last four without the loss of a set. He faced Argentina's finest, Juan Martín del Potro, in the semis. The center court crowd was treated to an incredible display of tennis. Djokovic and del Potro fought out the longest semi-final in Wimbledon history. After four hours and 44 minutes, the top seed progressed through to his 11th Grand Slam final to play the second seed. Much had happened since Murray had lost the 2012 final to Federer. Having won Olympic gold and the US Open, he was now a proven Grand Slam champion, better equipped and less burdened by self-doubts. Just as in the 2012 US Open final between the pair, it was Murray who started the stronger. He went on to take a two-set lead. Djokovic refused to buckle. He saved three match points, but Murray stayed strong. No longer would it be necessary to count back how many years since Fred Perry won that title. There was a really different feeling about Wimbledon 2013 that it was Andy Murray's time and I just felt he was ready for it it felt like mentally he was ready for it and it just all came together in one perfect match if seven is not his lucky number 
up to that stage, what had better be now, the seventh day of the seventh month after 77 years. Incredible. An amazing moment in the history of British sport. Five weeks on at the US Open, Djokovic would be the runner-up again. Rafa Nadal was the victor with a four-set win over the world number one. I think the Wimbledon loss certainly hurt Rafa. And um, while he was never going to get that back, he wanted to make up for it. Rafa secured the year-end number one ranking in London at the 2013 ATP World Tour Finals. But it was Djokovic who won the title, defeating Nadal in straight sets. January 2014, Melbourne Park. Men's tennis would have a Swiss major champion, but his initials were not RF. Stanislas Wawrinka defeated Djokovic in an epic five-set quarter-final en route to his victory over Nadal to win his first Grand Slam crown. He's such an exciting tennis player. I mean, when he unleashes that backhand and there's this sort of roar that comes out of him like a, you know, a lion, it's just so exciting to watch because he's got so much power. To see Vavrinka make the breakthrough, I think, has given uh, thoughts to other players of his age group. I think, well, if he can do it, why can't we do it? Coming into the hardcourt season, Djokovic had not won a title in 2014 but it was the Serb who dominated the ATP Masters 1000 series with victories in Indian Wells and Miami. When he got Indian Wells under his belt, he sent, seemed to huh, almost take a bit of a, a deep breath and a sigh, and, and uh, um, things were, were back to normal, and then backed it up with Miami, and, and he win, and he beats the, his two biggest rivals in, in, those, in those finals, in, in Roger and Rafa's. On the clay courts, there were old and new faces reaching the latter end of the big tournaments. In Monte Carlo, it was an all-Swiss final, with Vavrinka defeating Federer. Djokovic was absent from Madrid with a wrist injury, where Nadal was victorious over rising star Kei Nishikori from Japan. In Rome, Djokovic was fit again. The final was a battle between the top two players in the world. The Serb won his 19th Masters Series title. I can honestly say that in all the build-up to the French Open for the first time ever, I didn't think my money was going to be on Rafa. It just felt like, you know, Novak wants this so badly and all the pieces of Jigsaw were coming together. He'd kind of beaten Nadal four times and on clay. And uh, it just felt like it was his time. The top four players in Paris were Nadal, Djokovic, Vavrinka and Federer. Murray was ranked eighth and was entering a major without a coach. He'd parted company with Ivan Lendl in Miami. The first big-name casualty in Paris was Vavrinka, who lost in the first round to Spain's Guillermo García López. In round four, Federer was beaten in five sets by Latvia's Ernest Gulbis, while Andy Murray survived two five-set encounters with Germany's Philipp Kohlschreiber and Spain's Fernando Verdasco. Most of the matches he played through the French Open, his levels were getting higher and higher, and almost I felt when he beat Badasco and Kohlschreiber, they were at the highest we've ever seen him on a clay court until the semi-final. <laughs> and then that was the most devastating thrashing of Andy Murray that we've ever seen in a Grand Slam. But I think Andy was really down on himself, losing 3-2-1, and one against Nadal in the semis, and he says, I blame myself for that. Well, I don't know if he should blame himself, because Rafa was just awesome. In the final, Nadal faced Djokovic. The French Open is the one major title to elude the serve. But no man in tennis history had won nine Grand Slam singles crowns at the same tournament, and that was Nadal's quest. When I was watching it, I just felt like Novak, quite early on in the match, suddenly didn't believe. And it was like the realization of trying to beat this guy 
in a place that he's dominated for eight out of nine years, over five sets was a totally different puzzle and equation than it was to beat him over best of three. That double fault on match point in the final and to do it for the second time in three years in the French final, I think that's gonna have a bit of a telling factor on Novak. It was Rafa's crown. His victory meant he'd equal Pete Sambras's 14 major titles. Only Federer is ahead of him with 17 Grand Slam crowns. The Wimbledon men's seedings factor in a player's current ranking plus their performance on grass over the last two years. After successive early round exits in 2012 and 2013, Nadal is the second seed. I think Rafa will come into Wimbledon this year also wanting to make up for what happened 12 months ago. And I think we'll see a better Rafa Nadal at Wimbledon this year. It's interesting because when you look at his, um, you know, what he's achieved at Wimbledon before the last two years, it's extraordinary. And, uh, you know, former champion, been in the final so many times, and, um, you know, I'm sure he's a little bit jittery about it. Djokovic's grass court performances over the last two years means that he is this year's top seed at the championships. He will be perfect for Wimbledon when Wimbledon starts. But in the back of his mind, losing again the French will be a tough loss to bear. It's so emotionally draining and physically draining playing on the clay courts and you have such a short space of time to recover. So it's going to be interesting to see how he bounces back from that defeat. After Paris, Andy Murray appointed a new coach. When Andy appointed Ivan Lendl, he started a trend. He was a trailblazer, really. Now you've got Roger with Stefan Edberg, you've got Novak with Boris Becker, you've got Kaine Shikori with Michael Chang. If, he's, if this is another start of another trend in appointing Amelie Maresmo, a woman, to coach him, we'll see. I'll be honest, I was quite shocked, uh, along with quite a lot of the other tennis community, because it is so left field, it's very thinking outside the box, and it hasn't really been done before. There'll be a reason why he's chosen her, whether it's because you know, she's a very studious type, she might think a little bit differently. You know, we think of her as quite um, academic and very calm and very straight talking. Maybe he doesn't want to shout at the box anymore, and he certainly won't be able to shout at Amelie. Murray warmed up for Wimbledon at London's Queen's Club, where he lost in the third round to Radek Stepanek from the Czech Republic. The third seed will start the defence of his title on Monday. Roger Federer is seeded four. Once again, he won the title in Halle. Perfect preparation for Southwest 19. I'd like to think that Roger does have a, another title in him. I think he's too great a champion not to. And I also think that this year he's had a much better season than he had last year leading into Wimbledon. It's a different feel about the way he's playing. He's added a little bit more in terms of coming in more. He's at the net more. He's tr definitely trying to keep points shorter. And it's very, it's very sporadic when he does it. But I imagine that when he comes to here onto the grass, he's going to be doing it a lot more. And it almost feels as if how he's used the whole year was aiming for Wimbledon. He's playing great tennis. We're seeing the old Roger Federer back on the tennis courts. I think uh, SW19 will see RF18. Since winning the Australian Open, it's been a disappointing year for the fifth seed, Stan Wawrinka. He's had an incredible record against the top ten this year, so it hasn't all been bad, but he was very honest at the French when he lost early, and he said, you know, there's a lot of the jigsaw puzzle that's kind of a few pieces missing at the moment, and I've got to try and put it all back together. First set, Thomas Burdick to serve. The 2010 Wimbledon runner-up, Thomas Burdick, is the sixth seed. The big serving Czech knows just what it feels like to experience the big occasion. He's got the ability to be at the business end, the pointy end of Wimbledon. He is very firmly entrenched in the world's top 10. He's got an incredibly dangerous game. And if things work for him, he can do incredible damage. The 11th seed, Bulgaria's Grigor Dimitrov, is one of the tour's rising stars. I expected more from Dimitrov at the French. Granted, he had a tough one against Ivo Karlovic and all that, but 
He's got a game for grass. And he proved it by winning the title at Queen's. He'll certainly be one to watch at Southwest 19, particularly for the youngsters. Japan's Kei Nishikori, the 10th seed, is another exciting player and one to look out for. I love watching Nishikori play because he's so neat and tidy and he's so almost petite compared to these giants that are out there on the tour. And his timing is second to none. And now he's suddenly become someone to be really, really feared. But it's such a shame that his greatest opponent is his body and it keeps breaking down and it's such a shame because, um, you know, he is a real, real threat to any of them out there on the tour. Those were just some of the highest seeded players, but all 128 in the men's draw will be in search of that coveted title. But who would be our experts pick for 2014? I'm actually going to predict that Andy might defend it. Just because it's grass, you know, I'm hopeful that he will, through the early rounds, find his way and uh, by the latter stages of the tournament, he'll have what it takes unless he faces Nadal. My pick for Wimbledon 2014, the man to hold the Gold Challenge Cup, that beautiful trophy. Somebody's done it before, a few times in fact. I'm going to go at Roger Federer again. In 2013, Marion Bartoli and Sabine Lezicki contested the Wimbledon women's final. It was a match that nobody had predicted. Lezicki had defeated the world number one Serena Williams in a dramatic fourth round encounter. The final was a one-sided affair with Bartoli having the steadier nerve and stronger game. The French woman won her first Grand Slam title and became the first player in the Open era to win the Wimbledon title without the loss of a set. People loved it when she won, and you felt for her. You felt what it meant to Marianne Bartoli to win Wimbledon. Just 40 days after her Wimbledon victory, Bartoli announced her immediate retirement from tennis, citing unbearable pain from injuries sustained throughout her career. emotionally exhausting, draining. You know, it's like having an argument every single day, every time you have a tennis match. And if you win your argument today, you go out there and have another argument tomorrow. <laughs> so um, I could quite understand why she thought, you know what, I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead, go out on the top, and I'm never going to ever better winning Wimbledon. And good on her. In New York, it was a repeat of the 2012 final when Serena Williams defeated Victoria Azarenka in an exciting three-set match to win her fifth US Open title. This we've seen with Serena so often. You knock her down and she's going to come back and come back stronger and bigger and better than ever. And that's what we saw with the US Open. That was a great final. At the WTA Tour Championships in Istanbul, Serena defeated China's Li Na to win the year-end competition for a fourth time. In January 2014, Li went one step further, defeating surprise finalist Slovakian Dominika Sibulkova to win her first Australian Open crown. The American hard courts and the European clay court season saw Serena Williams back on target, collecting titles in Miami and Rome, with Maria Sharapova winning in Madrid. Coming into the French Open, Williams topped the rankings by a considerable margin with Lee in second spot. Both players dramatically fell at the first hurdle to up-and-coming stars. Serena lost in straight sets to Spain's Gabin Muguruza, while Lee was beaten by Francis Kristina Mladenovic. I was shocked at Serena's loss at, at Roland Garros, coming in as the defending champion. Never ever thought that she was going to go out so early, and, and the way she played it was very disappointing. In the semi-finals, the Romanian Simona Halep defeated Germany's Andrea Petkovic, while Canada's Eugenie Bouchard was beaten by Maria Sharapova. I don't think anybody believed Maria was going to win another French, let alone herself. You know, clay is not her surface. 
but there was something in, in her mind. You could see it as the tournament kept going on and on, she was gutsing out matches. In the final, experience won over youth. Sharapova won her second French Open title. But Halep is certainly now a real contender for the majors. I think it was just so nice to see her actually getting her game back together, resurrected in its full glory, and just striking the ball beautifully. We were enthralled the way Sharapova fought, the way um, Halep attacked and defended. We couldn't have asked for more. It was a riveting match. Despite the disappointment of Paris, for many, Serena Williams, the top seed, will arrive at Southwest 19 as the favorite. When you knock her down, she's right back up. And that's why I believe what happened at the French would have made her so mad that she wants to right that wrong and that she's going to come back so strong. We've seen it before, and she's going to win Wimbledon. I think to beat Serena Williams here at Wimbledon is going to be somebody that returns really well and can challenge her mentally, and not many people can get into her head. But what are the chances of her closest rivals? Can the fifth seed, Maria Sharapova, capitalise on her French Open victory? She made it clear that was a very emotional victory. She said it was the toughest Grand Slam final she's ever played. And that says it all. If you can work your way through that and still be standing at the end holding the trophy, then you know you have got an incredible mental approach, how strong you have to be to be in those situations and come through. And that is only going to be an incredible plus and positive for Maria Sharapova with Wimbledon. Lina, the second seed, chose not to play a warm-up event before the championships. You know, the trouble with Lina is that she's either all on or all off, and we saw total all off at the French, to the point where she literally had no confidence left, you know, with the confidence not that high, you know, she's vulnerable. Simona Halep, the third seed, prepared on the grass courts in the Netherlands. I think she's got a good game for grass. She's Because she's so kind of efficient in her movement, her footwork will be very key on the grass courts. I think she could do well here. The 2012 finalist, Agnieszka Radvanska, is seeded four. She's got a wonderful game to watch. She mixes it up, she'll volley, she'll serve and volley and all that, so she does mix up the game. I would like to see a little bit more emotion from her. After a three-month absence from the tour with a foot injury, Victoria Azarenka, seeded eight, made her comeback at Eastbourne. I don't think anyone will expect too much from Azarenka. We haven't seen her for a while now. Um, it's a difficult surface to come to terms with if you're not prepared properly for it, and she's been off the tour for quite a while. The 13th seed is French Open semi-finalist Eugenie Bouchard. I think she has amazing uh, composure on the court, uh, a ruthless determination. I mean, it's quite clear that she wants to go to the very top of the game. And she's just really headstrong. I mean, she's a real star in the making. Since reaching the 2013 Wimbledon final, the 19th seed Sabine Lizicki has experienced a disappointing 12 months. She was the surprise of Wimbledon last year. And I think she's also felt that pressure. You know, she's had some good results since. But I think a lot of people expected Sabine Lisicki to be among the top four players in the world after that. So, like Stan Wawrinka with the Australian Open, I think Sabine Lisicki has felt the pressure as well. Those were just some of the highest seeded women, but all 128 in the draw will be in search of a title, Wimbledon champion. So who do our experts think will be lifting the trophy? I'm going to pick Serena Williams to win it, but um, not only because of the tennis that she can produce on a grass court, but because of the loss that she had at the French Open. And I think that will just spur her on and uh, give her added incentive to try and find her best tennis again and to prove to everybody why she's number one in the world. My strong, strong view on the women's champion for 2014 is Serena Williams. Wimbledon for Serena, oh, this is the pinnacle. 
it is everything to her. You know, when she walks out onto that court, something takes over. And, and that's why I believe it'll be Serena's title again. For the next two weeks, the eyes of the sporting world will be focused on the All England Lawn Tennis Club, where the world's best will compete for the most coveted trophies in their sport. Thank you.